Bob Nagy back here, AB5N, with a look at the Yaesu FT-DX10 and comparing it with the radio everybody knows and loves, the ICOM 7300. So we've seen a bunch of videos out there on the 7300, not as many on the FT-DX10. So I'm going to compare the features head to head to answer the question, is the FT-DX10 worth the extra couple hundred bucks? Because your happiness with the radio isn't all dependent on the Sherwood numbers. So let's compare those features head to head and answer that question. Taking a look at the radio sitting side by side, first thing that strikes us is that the Yesu is larger. It has a larger screen and it has more buttons on the front. That'll be our starting point. First look at the Yesu and you see that the screen is really contrasty and punchy. The buttons are nicely laid out and the main tuning dial and subdial are large and attractive. And the ICOM's nice too. It has that sort of military look to it, has a really nice screen, and if you used an ICOM before, you can operate this rig immediately. Looking at the rear of the FTDX10, we can see it has a lot of I.O. In fact, it has more than the ICOM 7300. But it doesn't have dedicated RCAs for your amplifier, PTT, and ALC. You have to get them out of a multi-pin connector. Not too difficult. The most important, though, is that connector on the bottom right, that external monitor connector, and that's a big plus for the FTDX10. Looking at the 7300, by comparison, it looks a lot simpler, and it is. There's fewer USB connectors on it, but it does have that big plus of those two RCAs on the top right to go to your amplifier's PTT and ALC lines. Now let's for a moment talk about the differences in how these two companies approach their SDRs. With the 7300, they use a direct digital conversion, and that requires a much more expensive and fast ADC chip in there, and theoretically should result in the highest performance. So with the FTDX10, we have a mixer. They call it a hybrid to make it sound better, but it's an older SDR technology. But it was a brilliant move because there's one stage of superheterodyne mixing in front of the A to D chip. That allows them to sell you roofing filters for additional income, plus it allows them to use a much less expensive A to D chip, making manufacturing costs lower and profit margin higher, and it lands up producing pretty darn good specifications as well. So it was really a home run idea for Yesu. So let's take a look at the ICOM 7300 screen. It's got averaging, which the FTDX doesn't have, and it's very punchy and contrasty. Size-wise, eh, looking at, I don't know, three and a half inches? Decent size and absolutely adequate to do everything you need to do. The FTDX10's larger screen really takes advantage of its size. It's got a bigger spectral display, it's got a bigger frequency display, it has an analog meter all the time, and it has an inset look at the signal as it's coming in. Notice the very fast refresh without averaging. It isn't that much bigger than the ICOM, but boy, they've just made such great use of it. What all of the ICOMs have going for them is progressive tuning and that means as you're tuning slow you get this nice fine tuning as soon as you start to pick up the speed on the dial the, it, the gearing goes up and it goes much faster so it's very easy to fly across the band you get close to your signal you slow down and right away you're in that fine tuning mode so it's a really nice feature that uh, I don't know anybody else that has that on the Yesu, it has an outer tuning dial control over here, which is their multi-purpose outer dial. It's got like a four-letter acronym, MP something or other. And you can assign it to a bunch of different stuff just by pressing the button over here, and then it'll be that thing. So if I press band and I move around, I can move around the bands. If I press mode, I can move around the modes. And with your custom select switch over here, you can assign anything you want to it. Right now I have the screen sensitivity level assigned to it. As soon as I push it, the outer ring becomes that screen sensitivity control. So that's pretty darn nice. But in tuning, what it does for you is nice. I keep the fine button turned on for the main tuning dial here, which gives me a single hertz increment. And all this stuff is adjustable in the menus. But on the outer one, I have a, a much faster tuning rate. And that allows me, depending on the mode, to move fast in on something and then take the outer one, the main one, and fine tune in on it. And I put a little bit of drag on the outer one so I can zone in right to that zero, zero mark pretty easily. So in combination, these things work pretty darn well. So we see we have a 100 hertz movement right now on the outer ring and a 1 hertz movement on the inner uh, tuning, main tuning dial. You know, 
I can put these loop antennas quite high. So I, I think you you very wisely uh, had that loop up in the air. I wish you could uh, duplicate that high voltage point out there, and, and I don't know why. I'm not not saying that I can explain why, but it is a fact. And the loop does not have that high voltage point. And Now I'd like to compare the noise floor, and I noticed that the Yesu is very quiet. Now the ICOM's very quiet too, but what we're going to do is sort of just turn them on and look at if the S meters are moving at all on 20 meters here. Not really whatsoever. Now there's no exactly comparable gain structure in the front end to these two radios, because on this you've got IPO, which is no RF amp whatsoever coming in and then preamp 1 and 2. On the ICOM, I believe there always is an RF amp in, but you have an RF amp 1 and 2 additional RF amps. So the most comparable situation is the first RF amp on the ASU compared to the non-RF preamp turned on to the ICOM. So as we can see, uh, the noise floor is virtually zero. We're on a 250-foot triangular loop pretty much out of town, loops about 30 feet off the ground. It's going to be a fairly no, low background noise level, but the ASU is a very quiet radio. Now this is of course just a you know relativistic kind of comparison here. Preamp off, the most comparable mode to the ASU in the ICOM, and I am seeing about you know a couple of S units of meter deflection on this giant loop that we have this on. Of course it's not tuned up for 20, it's a giant 250 foot loop. Meaning it's got a lot of RF juice coming in on it. So I am seeing a little bit of uh, meter deflection on the ICOM without a signal. Now looking at 80 meters with the preamplifier off on this 250 foot delta loop, midday, outside of Hot Springs, Arkansas, fairly rural situation. There's no local noise that I know about. And we've got about an S5 background noise level. Not unusual for all kind of atmospherics and stuff might be hitting us here. So let's compare that with the ASU. Now taking a look at the uh, FDDX10, as close as we can get the situation here, I guess we're one kilohertz off, it looks like we're about the same S meter reading. But I have to tell you, de facto, when you're listening to the receivers after all the internal filtering and stuff, the ASU seems a little bit quieter for some reason. Let's try the noise blanker. Wow, completely takes it out. Very nice noise blanker action. Let's take a look at the noise blanker action on the uh, on the ICOM here. Okay. All, all absolutely uh, the same effect. Hold it, hold it in there. So the ICOM has three different adjustments on the quick. Uh, setting here, you just hold down the noise blanker and you can adjust the level, depth, and width. The uh, Yesu does the same thing, but it has two of them on the quick menu and one of them in more, in more of the deep menu. So the net effect on these blankers is about identical. So say we want to zone in on a digital signal that's right in the center of the passband, and that's the optimum situation. You want it to be in the center for being able to do this. Take one control, take it all the way to the left. One control, take it all the way to the right. And you knock out everybody. But that one signal. There you go. So hit the control again. Bam. But if this guy was, if you were listening on FL Digi or one of the upward PC programs, uh, you'd have the whole three kilohertz bandwidth showing. And if your signal was not in the center, you would have trouble using passband tuning on this radio to try to localize it because, as shown, you can only get the narrowest bandwidth in that very center. Once you start moving off center, well, I can't move the red one any further to the right. Uh, the signal was on the left side. Well, I can get a narrower window, but I can't zone, a, zone in on it exactly and completely. So if we want to zone in on a signal, say, that's not in the center of the passband on the Yesu, it is possible to do because you can shift the window and you're getting a graphic representation of it, which is sort of nice. 
you could move this over here all the way over and then narrow in the bandwidth on it. Look at that. Able to separate those two signals next to each other. That's pretty slick. Now let's take a quick check of notch performance. It shouldn't be much different here. It's just a carrier from a broadcaster, top end of 40 meters. There's a manual control if you want manual control. Having that little graphic representation is sort of, sort of keen. Here's the ICOM notch. Now they both have automatic and manual notch, so you can hand dial it in or you can just have it do it automatically. On both of them, the automatic notch will knock out multiple carriers at the same time. You also have the width of the notch adjustment on both radios. The digital noise reduction on the Yesu, 40 meters here. Down at me and the mama behind them. So uh, that's pretty cute. Well, they always seem to go away after a while, but I haven't seen them the last couple of years, so uh, she might have got killed or something. I don't know. But anyway, uh, also see an armadillo once in a while. And that's about all that comes through my backyard. Uh, I saw a bobcat once in Colorado when I was riding a motorcycle up this road uh, that goes between... Uh, uh, between so it's very strong, and it does give a little bit of a watery sound, but I, I do like the overall effect. Anything else uh, like that... Uh, uh, I've seen lots of deer, you know. It's off. Across the road at night when I've been driving, and mostly up in New Mexico, Colorado. Not so much in Texas, around here, especially in the Dallas area. There's too much going on in the city to, to get let deer uh, come up. But down south of here, uh, there's quite a few deer, so. But I don't go down there very often. And, uh, so both of them have a pretty effective digital noise reduction. The Yesu is stronger overall. Once you kick it up over five, it's really kicked in. Both of them at higher noise reduction levels have a watery effect. At a light effect on the, D on the 7300, there doesn't seem to be any watery effect, and it does reduce the background noise. On the Yesu, even at a setting of one, you're going to start to incur a little bit of roll, phase roll, and, and, and such but it does have a very profound uh, digital noise reduction effect. Both of these radios have the capability to do this display with adjustable times and such and sensitivity on these two displays over here. All right, this is, this is set now too, too high. There we go. And uh, they're pretty much comparable as far as that's concerned. The Transmit tone controls on the ICOM are simple but effective. We hit menu, set, tone control, transmit, sideband, because each mode seems to have its own tone control here. That's pretty cool. And then you have bass and treble. Uh, also, you have three presets for your transmit bandwidths, wide, narrow, and uh, narrow, medium, and wide. So you can set up your three presets, like the receive uh, filter bandpass presets, three transmit filter bandpass uh, presets for your width of your transmissions. And that's sort of nice. Those are also selectable on the fly. But as far as EQ on the uh, ICOM, each mode has an adjustment, but it's just bass and treble. The net effect is uh, it sounds fabulous, and this thing has a beautiful sounding transmitter. Now, for setting the transmit quality with bass, treble, and mid, we would press the function, multifunction button in. If if you go to radio setting first, this is the setting for the receive treble and bass. And it has it for the different modes. If you want to get to the transmit, then you go to operation setting. And that, if you start at the top under TX audio, 
you can see that it's got actually a whole bunch of settings in a row. P R uh, M T R C is the settings for bass, mid, and treble with the compressor off, or the RF speech processor off. As you get up into the next set, P, P, R, M, T, R, C, that's the settings, the same type, for use with the RF processor on. So you have completely different tonal controls for with processor on and with processor off. And you have low, mid, and high. And you can set the set points of the low, mid, and high as you like it. I like 200 for the low, 800 for the mid, and 2100 for the high myself but it also has your level control and your bandwidth control so you see those sweeps on the parametric equalizer it just widens those out or it narrows them up and it's all by you listening with the headphones onto your own signal preferably on another radio that's even better than using the monitor function and dialing these in so you go in i'd set them at 200 800 2100 go ahead and then set the uh, levels while listening to yourself, one, two, three, and then get, then go back and do the bandwidth, one, two, three, and then go through the whole bunch again. Don't change the set frequencies, but the, the level and bandwidth, and then go ahead and kick your RF processor on and do the same thing for these. Now, on the Yesu, the bandwidth setting is always on the fly over here. So the outer ring on this control here is always going to allow you to narrow and widen, widen the passband. All right, well, get everything prepared, so... Uh, four, kilo, four kilohertz being the widest? Uh, forget what to say, okay? And this, now I'm in sideband mode here, but it allows you to go down to 300 hertz even in sideband. Jump in here and holler every once in a while. Okay? When you hit the default, the screen color changes there. Now remember, you also have the front end roofing filters here. And the stock comes with 500 hertz for CW use, or digital, I guess you could use it for. 3 kilohertz for your general SSB use. And 12 kilohertz is the default setting for AM. It's not changeable, but when you're in sideband, you can you can change it in the other modes to uh, 12 kilohertz. If, I don't know why you'd want it, but you know maybe if a guy's 4 kilohertz wide, and you got your bandwidth all the way out, then you'd want to use the 12 kilohertz filter. Normally, you'd leave it in the 3 kilohertz mode. But every time you're on any mode like this, your bandwidth selection is totally on the fly with this control here. It does remember as per mode where you were. I'm waiting. Now, what's nice on the ICOM is that in AM mode, you have complete bandwidth control. And you have three uh, filter presets just like you have on sideband, which are separate from the sideband ones and independently settable. Just hold down that button and you can set those three presets to whatever you like. The menuing system on the 7300 is very refined, and it's a completely new system for the 7610 and 7300 and 9700, very similar menuing systems, but they're definitely completely revamped for uh, this age. So everything is really big and easy to understand. This is the only one that's got a ton of stuff in it, and there's a bunch of subsets in here which you can go through with your manual. But boy, you know, if you just think, uh, where might that be? It's all spelled out quite simply over here. The menuing system on the 10, you get to by just pressing the function button in, and it's got all the commonly used stuff right here. As soon as you touch any of these buttons, this becomes your control for that, that value. Uh, when we get into a lot of the other stuff, then we're going to go down with these other submenus over here, and it's pretty darn logical to navigate. I haven't, I found it better than the FTDX 101D series. Uh, I don't seem to get lost on this. Like most of the times when I hit that button or this button, it is the stuff I'm looking for. So everything's adjusted, and you know, the, the deeper stuff that you don't use or you're setting it once and forgetting it, it's going to be in these submenus in the menuing system. But, uh, you know, I'd, I'd say I'd give it a, a B for, in, you know, being an intuitive. Now, antenna tune up procedure is really the same on, on these radios. Uh, no big surprise there. You just hold down the tuner button for a few seconds and it'll go into tune mode. Right now we're 
greater than 3 to 1 SWR, and neither of these tuners is happy with a greater than 3 to 1 SWR. There is an emergency tuning mode selection in the 7300, which will allow you to go a little bit wider than that, but that's sort of a little bit dangerous territory. So these are really for just trimming out an antenna that is slightly off. It's, of course, the same procedure when you are uh, doing the antenna tuner on the 7300 or the FTDX-10. Hold the button in, and it has a ton of memories in there for the antenna tuner, so it will remember, I don't remember, every like 100 kilohertz or so, it has a memory, and it holds that tuning. So next time you go there and you turn the tuner on, automatically it's tuned. Um, it has complete control of the colors on the screen as far as the trace, the edge of the, uh, the trace, and the peak hold. So if we hold down this button, it allows us to go in there and adjust any one of these colors to anything we want. Red, green, and blue, mix them together. I like a sort of spectrum analyzer look to it. And, of course, it has the averaging, which the ASU doesn't have. So, um, and both of them have waterfall speed control. That's normal on both of them. But this averaging control is unique to the ICOM. I like it and became used to it. Now that I'm used to the FTDX-10's fast display, I have no problem with that. Um, also, uh, this over here, narrow and fine, what's this, narrow and wide, same control on the ASU as far as the gradation, the, the granularity of the display, whether it looks sort of just smoother or it's more defined with little lines. And I know you guys have seen this before, but the 3D display on this is, you know, I, I didn't like it to begin with. It's growing on me. I had a 101D for a while. But you normally would adjust your sensitivity on the scope so that static grass, as we call it, just goes away. And then you'll just see the signals themselves as they recede into the past. And, uh, of course, you can go ahead and change your color on that to something else if you like it. Uh, I don't know if this helps at all. Probably on this, I like this one. Uh, and of course you can touch the display to go to the signal as well, to center that signal. So uh, it's rather interesting and, uh, you know, you're doing other things, you just want to watch the band, I, I'm, I'm, it's growing on me. Now, I couldn't find an ultra strong signal next to a weak one, but here's two signals right next to each other. And the guy on the right has no IMD products, so we're not, you know, not to worry about it. He's not splattering. Neither radio can handle that. Mm -hmm. 7300 has no problem whatsoever there. Maybe in a heavy-duty contest situation. You know, it's further down on the Sherwood list, but it's, uh, it's a respectable receiver. Okay, uh, very uh, pleased to meet you. I, I think for the first time. I'm not sure if we've worked before. Let me see. we got signals on both sides of us. They're not but up against us, but they're darn close. I just kind of admiring your dog there on the QRZ page. That's so... Uh, uh, that, that looks like a gym and game. you don't hear anything and you shouldn't this thing is, is pretty much brick wall and uh, when it really shows is when you're in CW and really get close KE5FB in sunny and cool South Mississippi adios good care Bill thank you The ICOM gives you a bunch of record uh, memories over here, so you can record your CQs or whatever you want to put in there. And guys you call, often you can record your, your uh, calls to them in there. 
and uh, it's pretty much easy to operate. You can get an external uh, or make an external pad for this as well with switches that will initiate these and automatically key the transmitter. On the 7300 you can hit record over here and you can record by hitting this record a QSO. You work in that super ultra rare one in the South Pacific and you want to record it and save it and with the SD card over here you can record a lot of time. On the Yesu, it's possible to use this message feature here to go ahead and record your outgoing transmit messages and then play them back. It automatically keys the transmitter and sends the message out. On the receive recording, if you just hit record over here, it goes into record mode and then you press it again to get out of record mode. If you press play over here, you have all of the files you've recorded over here and... Intone 20. I can hear pretty good. You know, pick up a pretty good signal, and then when I try... And you can just play them back. The playback level is independent of the volume control on recorded QSOs here, and it's done from inside this menu. Something I like about the uh, icon that the ASU doesn't have is that the RF gain control can be set up as RF gain and squelch at the same time. So you can, uh, and you'll see it on the meter, where it's going to attenuate. I'm getting a little bit of glare here on the plastic that's still on the screen, but as I raise that... Uh, RF gain control over halfway, it becomes a, squ a squelch control. So it's handy to have sort of both. You're at full, full gain at that point, but you're able to set the level at which the signal has to exceed to come out of the, sp out of the speaker. On the Yesu, it's either a gain control or a squelch control. Now, something I've noticed on the FTDX 101 series and the FTDX 10 series is, you know, these are digital controls. The RF gain control on both of these series of radios, under strong signals, can get a little crunchy as you're adjusting it in the three quarters to full region. I don't know if we'll hear it here. I'm uh, just uh, put in Jane Russell, and you'll see why I mentioned it. This gets a little crunchy. It's not really any problem, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, in the last revision of FTDX10 software, as of January 2022, they added a nice little thing called preset. I'm going to hit the mode button. You can't see me hitting it there. And on the bottom is an extra, well, mode. What it is, though, really is a set of settings that you would probably want to use for FT8 or digital settings that set up all the stuff that you normally use for for digital mode and when you want to kick those particular settings on you can press the preset of course I just turned it off and look at that too you can adjust the size of the uh, ratio between the waterfall and the spectral display by just touching the screen the ICOM does not have that I like it and here's the FTDX10 decoding PSK31 on 20 meters does a nice job once you get your decode level set right and your bandwidth you center it right on the uh, display up here and bada bing now it does not allow you to type PSK31 from a keyboard it does have canned memories so you can do it with canned memories so that's a little bit of a letdown but that's pretty nice for uh, just sitting there decoding here's a guy uh, cooking along at about 22 words a minute and I uh, have the decoder on and what you have to do is you have to match the speed on the internal setting of the words per minute with the you know com the signal that's coming in as best you can guess and you'll see if you you know try a couple of different speeds all of a sudden it'll start decoding very well if a guy's using a bug or a hand key and his code is all out of balance it's going to do as about as good as your brain does but if a guy's using an electronic here nice paddles which this guy is it does pretty good sometimes it doesn't space the words quite right but you can read them all And it'll go easily up to 30 words a minute. An interesting function that is expressly Yesu is called Contour. And basically what it does is it gives you the ability to put a little audio frequency bump right wherever you want it, sort of in the middle of the passband or down. You can adjust the frequency, the intensity, and the width of it. So you can see it on the display here. Uh -huh. You doubled. Uh, Vance was doubling with you. Anyway, all right, uh, Vince, listen up for this big station. Uh, you're going to have to put your 40 dB. No, you can hear the difference there. 
I've spent a lot of time with both of these radios, and I can tell you that Yaesu did learn from the FTDX 101 series, and this little radio is a little more refined. On the Yaesu, it has a uh, thing which is unique to Yaesu, which is called AMC, a sort of automatic mic control. Remember, any of these menu items that you touch here becomes controllable by the multifunction knob. So I threw the AMC level, and I start adjusting it. What I've noticed, though, is that um, really it's a, a sort of a limiter in my book. It wants to keep you from overmodulating, uh, and 100 takes it completely out of the circuit. As you come down, when you get to around this area, you'll notice all of a sudden your power starts to reduce down, and it's clamping down on your audio drive to make sure you don't overdrive the radio. I'd leave this at 100%, and I would adjust everything as per normal, watching that ALC meter for best results. So in the uh, human engineering physical situation here on the FTDX10, these buttons, which you're going to use a lot here, <laughs> band, mode, and stuff, are so tightly situated in between these knobs that it's very easy to touch the ring here or, or, the, or any control here when you're using these. And you might try that you want to hit the lock button sometimes <laughs> if you know you're going to stay in that frequency or going to adjust things. Uh, but, you know, once you get used to it, you'll end up not hitting the knob. It's, oh, I just hit the knob that time, and you bump yourself off 100 kilohertz. So it's a, it's a little tight in here. The manual ship with the FTDX10 is uh, A4 format, the, the larger vertical format, about 120 pages of good stuff, well-written manual. Now, I know it's ridiculous to do this, but I'm going to do a numerical score of both of these radios. 7300, well, it's got a better VFO tuning method. That progressive tuning, I really like it. Uh, the FTDX10 is not bad. I'm enjoying it too, but I'm giving them a point for that on 7300. The FTDX10 has more buttons. Boy, nobody likes menus. More buttons is good. A little hard to get to, so I'm only giving them a point. A better menuing system on the 7300. Boy, did they work that out. All new menuing system, giving them a point. Better selectivity on the FTDX10. That is huge. Those Sherwood reports, that's huge. It's brick wall. Giving them two points. Could give them three, but I'm being conservative. The 7300 does pass more bass and treble in the receive. And for older ears like mine and a lot of you guys, having that a little more high end in there helps with the articulation. And it's just a smoother sounding receiver. The FTDX10 has better transmit and receive equalizers. Going to give them a point on that. You get a lot of customization there. But the 7300 has a better overall sounding transmit signal. Uh, the 10 is fairly aggressive. It's really punchy. It gets through. It sounds good. But you know when you work somebody with a uh, 7300 because, man, it sounds fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and give them two points on that. The FTDX10 does have a quieter, more sensitive receiver. We heard that, especially with the CW there. It just feels quieter, and it can reject noise in the neighborhood just a little bit better than the 7300. Um, the AM bandwidth control is gives you complete control on the 7300. I like that. It's not a biggie. I'm giving them a point for that. You got narrow and wide on the 10. It's very usable. But the FTDX10 has a better digital noise reduction system. It's very heavy handed and aggressive, but I like what it sounds like. It's just better. A point for that. Hey, F7300, $200 less on street price right now. That's significant. It's a great, great value. But it seems like you do get some more for your money on the FTDX10. So they get a point for being a better value and lower cost. Hey, they've sold so many of them. The display on the FTDX10 is far better. They make better use of it. It's larger. It's punchier looking. Uh, it is just magnificent for the size. And I've really fallen for it. So they get three points. The only three-pointer here. There are fewer engineering mistakes in the IC7300. Uh, these guys... Man, they're good at this stuff. And there's a few warts on that FTDX10 like you saw, but nothing that really impedes the enjoyment of the radio. PSK RTTY CWD code, that's a two-pointer. Not a lot of guys use this stuff. They don't let you use the keyboard in PSK. But on CW, that's nice. You can improve your speed by watching, you know, fast guys and looking at the decode. So I give them two points on that. External monitor connection, that's huge. Uh, the display is gorgeous, but a lot of people like to put that big monitor on there. Got to get a two-pointer on that. And it's got more I.O. on the back, and it's got the contour control and a lot of little stuff. I'm going to give an extra point on that. So if we're looking at 9 to 14, that's almost a 50% 
better score on the FTDX 10. Tip of the hat goes to the Yesu. So I hope that answers the question for you. Personally, myself, is it worth the extra couple hundred bucks? Yes, it is. It's a slightly newer design. It gives you a lot of stuff that I find very useful, and I get a lot of pleasure operating the radio. So it's, you know, it's beyond that Sherwood spec. Are you going to be happy? Yeah, I'm happy, and I'm going to give it a two thumbs up as far as I like this radio. See you next time.